This is the second in our series of videos of what we're calling favorites of the Michigan State Parks. It's not a best of list necessarily because it's very subjective and we looked at places around the state that we thought might be a good place for different reasons. The last video was about hiking uh, and if you haven't seen that I'm going to put a link to it below in the description. And this time we're going to talk about favorite parks for families. We know that families come in all different sizes, ages, interests, and so we tried to pick a few of our favorites, the ones that we saw had a lot of different activities, uh, so that anybody, no matter what age or interest that your family had, probably can find something to do with these parks. We also looked at trying to get some geographic diversity, so you'd have some opportunities depending on where you live. Some places might be a little bit closer, or maybe if you want to get a little further away, you have that option too. So here is our list of favorites for families at Michigan State Parks. We're going to start in the Upper Peninsula at Van Riper State Park, which is kind of a quintessential family park. The park encompasses more than a thousand acres and is located on the banks of the Pesheki River and Lake Michigami. I'm just impressed that you were able to say Pesheki River. Well, I've had to do it for two videos now and I finally learned how to pronounce it. And it took us a while in the first video when we did that. The park is located right off US 41 slash M28, right on Lake Michigami and the Pesheki River. Pesheki, Pesheki, Pesheki. I think it's Pesheki, anyway, okay. So, Lake Michigami has a nice little beach on it for families to enjoy, and on the beach is a really nice playscape that they've put up for the kids. Clearly, they had families in mind when they've put this park together. Yeah, that's one of the nicer playscapes we've seen with the um, big slides and the climby apparatuses and um, the, re what is it, reusable rubber surface so the kids don't hurt themselves when they fall off the slide. <laughs> yeah, it was nice to see that. And then right there also, there's uh, bathrooms right there near the beach. There's actually a laundry facility at this park. Always a must when you're, you know, for camping for families. <laughs> right. <laughs> and that is all at the end of what is quite a large parking lot for the day use area. So in addition to the campgrounds that are at this park, it's, it's well known for people coming and going for day use, I'm sure, because of the facilities that are there. But it's a huge parking lot. And in fact, part of that parking lot, they used up to build a bicycle pump track, which is something we've not seen at any other state park. No, I really like that. In the day we were there, there were a lot of kids enjoying it. Um, I took a turn at it and decided that wasn't for me. I had the wrong kind of bike, but, but it was something that the kids were out there enjoying. Yeah, they seem to be having a good time with that. And, you know, so then when you go from there, further back into the park, you have the campgrounds. And there's actually two different types of campgrounds. They have both a modern and a rustic at Van Riper. What's especially nice about the campground is that they have really big sites. So if you're a family that brings all the bikes and the tents and the chairs and the stuff for the kids and the, you know, if you got to pack and play or whatever it is, you're going to have a lot of room to set up all your stuff. And I think that's really cool because you never felt that like you were crowded there um, because the sites were so big. Yeah, I think some of the challenges of traveling with kids isn't so much the kids, it's the stuff that comes with them. <laughs> so you need someplace to put that. It's always nice to have an extra large site, give yourself some room to spread out and maybe a little privacy from your neighbor in the campground. We happened to visit Van Riper in September when they had Harvest Fest going on, and that is a big deal at Van Riper. Harvest Fest is a huge deal there. It's three weekends in a row of nonstop Halloween, basically, um, and everybody decorates their sites and comes in for trick-or-treating, so huge deal for families there. In addition to the large modern campground where you do have electric hookups, they also have a rustic campground. No hookups, but it's really nice and peaceful back there. And if you're hanging out at Van Riper, whether you're there for the day or you're camping, across the street, it's part of the park, is all the hiking trails. And so that's a great place to take your family, get, let the kids burn off some energy. And you might see some wildlife. Moose are known in the area. So at dawn or dusk, it's a great time to go out and look for them. Moving down to the Lower Peninsula, one of our favorite parks, probably the whole trip, but definitely our favorite for families, is Ludington State Park. And it is a favorite of a lot of people. Ludington State Park is the busiest state park in Michigan, and once we spent a week in there, we understood why. There's a ton of stuff to do there. It's huge. There's two lakes, a great lake and an inland lake. <laughs> yeah, two beaches, two playgrounds, three camping loops, as well as a rustic camping loop, um, an amphitheater, a lighthouse, 
There's just so much to do at Ludington State Park. There are hiking trails. There are biking trails. It's really hard to talk about just sort of the highlights of this park. I think we had a hard time putting together the original video and not making it an hour long because there was so much to talk about. But I do remember from that video, we said this was the park with all the ings. Yeah, yeah paddle boarding, kayaking, canoeing, biking, swimming, beaching, lighthousing, camping. Hiking. I mean, there's just so ing, much ing, stuff ing. that you can do. <laughs> and you can actually do a lot of that um, year-round activities because there's snowshoeing and skiing and that kind of stuff there. And this is a park that has a warming house set up in the winter. So year-round, families can find a good time at Ludington State Park. The best part about Ludington is families have been going there for generations. My family grew up going there way back in the 60s and 70s and the early 80s, and, and now we've taken our families there. And so I think it's just a park that once you go, you'll always go back there. It is nice, too, I will say, even though I, I mentioned it's the busiest state park in Michigan, because of its size and its layout, one of the things we noticed is you always have a lot of elbow room. I never really felt like we were crowded there, even though it was filled. I mean, the, the campgrounds were full. We couldn't get a reservation, couldn't get a spot there. We ended up staying outside the park and coming in for the day. So definitely one that I would check out if you have a family and, and want to keep them busy all weekend. <laughs> There's a lot for kids to do at Ludington State Park. There's a really nice visitor center where they've turned the upstairs into sort of a discovery zone uh, where there's a lot of educational things to read and see and touch. And, and so that's just a really cool thing. There's, uh, in addition to the two lakes, you've also have the river that runs through. And so you can rent tubes or bring your own tubes and take a nice leisurely float down the river. You'll end up at Lake Michigan and then, you know, walk back. And that's all within the state park. Moving further south in the Lower Peninsula, in southwest Michigan, you have Warren Dunes State Park, named for the dunes that are there, which is a huge part of that park and a lot of fun to enjoy. Warren Dunes is in the top five of the busiest state parks, partly because of the big beach and the dunes, but also partly because of its locale at the very southern end of Michigan near Indiana and Illinois. So you get a lot of out-of-state visitors as well but it is clearly designed for families with the big beach, the big campground, um, and just everything else that they have to do there. You can run up and down the dunes if you're so inclined, or you could just send your kids up and down the <laughs> dunes and wear them out for the night while you're laying on the beach. That would be a great opportunity to do that. Uh, there are hiking trails around the dunes. There's, it, it was just a really nice park. It is busy. It is one of those parks, if you're not camping there, and you want to go in for a day use, you basically need to go in in the morning mm -hmm. uh, and you need to stay there all day because you're not going to want to come and go because of the traffic that can build up because of it being so popular for both in-state and out-of-state visitors. Since it does get really busy and you aren't going to want to go out of the park, you're going to need to bring your food with you. But at least on some weekends, at least the weekend we were there, they had food trucks set up in the parking lot. So that's always an option and a nice uh, vendor amenity that the state park offers. There's also a playground, beach volleyball, and, and just a lot of space for kids to run around and, and picnic tables and grills for, for families to come in and have a picnic or a big family reunion. If you are camping there, you've got a couple different loops to choose from in the modern side, as well as a rustic campground. And there's a really nice camp store located in one of the loops of the campground where you'll find all sorts of, you know, camping supplies if you've forgotten anything, as well as, you know, shirts and souvenirs and even like inflatable rafts to take out onto the lake. So there's just a lot going on there for sure. It is conveniently located along I-94, like right near the freeway. So it's great for access. You do hear a little bit of road noise in the campground. We mentioned that in the original video that I'll link to so you can see that. But all in all, it's definitely a favorite of ours. And I think you can see why it's a favorite across the state for a lot of people. Waterloo State Park is next on our list of family favorites. It's located in sort of South Central Michigan. And at more than 20,000 acres, there is a lot to do there. It's super hard to encapsulate that. So while we encourage you to check out our original video, um, we'll kind of list a few things that you can see and do there. Everything about Waterloo is big. Like you said, 20,000 acres, but they also have five campgrounds. They have 21 lakes in the park and in the area. It's connected to other parks, so you can start hiking and keep hiking. <laughs> but just within Waterloo, there's 50 miles of trails, and there is a huge discovery center there that's really nice for families, and, and it's got stuff for kids to explore. I, I thought that was a really nice touch. We just got done visiting the Gerald Eddy Discovery Center here at Waterloo Recreation Area. And it was really cool. There's a lot to see and do. They've got a number of different displays of a rock and geological formation, the different types of trees, some animals, and uh, just a lot to learn about not only the specific history of Waterloo, but the general Michigan 
uh, the region of this area and the whole state as well. Yeah, it'd be a great spot if you have little kids, especially for families to go in and kind of learn about the different geology and lots of different wildlife and things, both in this area at Waterloo, but also around the state. And so I thought it was really well done. It was a neat place to just kind of hang out and spend some time for a while and learn something. Right. Even the little kids activity area, we had a lot of fun just like flipping up the things and seeing what the answers were, looking at the different rocks. Uh, they actually have a mastodon display because they have found fossils in this area from the mastodon. So I think that was really cool. Um, one of my favorite parts was they've got a couple live exhibits with a box turtle, a couple snakes, sea lampreys. Those are the really nasty things that are killing the fish, but they've got a couple on display. And oh, and the pond scum, they just have a, a bucket funny as it sounds, um, they just got a big bucket where they've dipped into one of the local ponds here uh, and you can see what's going on in there. And the more you stand and stare and just look into the water, all the little creepy crawlies and living things that you see uh, that you just kind of forget and don't realize are out in the ponds, but they're what's contributing to the life cycle and the ecosystems. Yeah. And the Discovery Center is open every day. Yeah. Um, so it's here if you want it. Uh, it'd be a great spot, especially if the weather's a little bit iffy and you're camping with your family and need somewhere to just kind of go and kill some time. You can spend a lot of time in there and have a good time with it. While there are 50 miles of trails, if you have a young family, you're probably not going to do a lot of exploring. I mean, you might. Um, but right around the Discovery Center are a series of one to two mile or shorter trails. And we really encourage you to check those out. They've got some interpretive signs along the way. And it's a great place for kids to kind of explore and learn about the different ferns and trees and wildlife that's out there. I like the way they did the short trails around the Discovery Center because it sort of gave you a taste of what the bigger trails were like at Waterloo. So that was kind of neat. You take little kids out and help them explore. If you are a little more adventurous, uh, they also have a mountain bike trail system there at Waterloo. So that's something else to consider checking out while you're there. The DTE trail is really nice. Oh, whether you're a mountain biker or even a hiker, you should get out and explore that. It is a huge park and you could spend a lot of time exploring it in a lot of different ways. So if you have the time and want to camp, as I mentioned earlier, there are five campgrounds. They have modern, they have rustic, they have hike in. So whatever your style, you can find a way to camp there and you can probably find something to do while you're there. Exactly. And these are campgrounds that when we talked to the people that we met staying there, that these families had been coming there for generations, grandparents and, and grandkids and parents and aunts and uncles and everybody. So it's a very family friendly park um, because many of these people get together like the same weekend every year. It's a big family unit and camp there. So uh, it's a great place for them to hang out. With both campgrounds being located on a lake, there's swimming opportunities, boating, fishing, you've got playgrounds. Um, and there's just there's just a lot for again for all ages at this park. I think it says a lot when you see a generational park where families have decided this is their place to go and they're going to keep doing it year after year after year. And I think it's because of the size and the variety at Waterloo. Moving over to Southeast Michigan, we come to Brighton State Recreation Area, another family favorite. This is another one of those state parks that has just a laundry list of things to do. There's multiple campgrounds, there's multiple lakes, there's multiple hiking trails and biking trails and different things that you can do in all kinds of different ways. You and your kids will never be bored at Brighton. There's fishing, boating, archery, disc golf, swimming, camping, beaching, and I'm sure plenty of other things that we missed because the park is so huge, we couldn't even see it all the day we were there. It is a really large park, and I think it's one of the ones we mentioned in the original video that I will link to in the description, <laughs> that you want to get a map right away when you get there because it is sort of sprawling and there's a lot to do, but it's a good opportunity to get the family out and try a lot of different things in a weekend or a week. Or even just for the day, there's just so much to do. Uh, but like you said, make sure you know ahead of time where you're gonna go and have that map because there are multiple entrances to this park. So depending on if you want to go to the big lake, the small lake, the hiking trails, the disc golf, you're gonna probably wanna know ahead of time where you're going. It's just a big park with a lot of variety. And that includes the campgrounds. So depending on the style of camping you like, there's modern, there's rustic, they have mini cabins. If you're not into the camping scene, there's a yurt. 
It's one of the one of the state parks now that has yurts, which we still have yet to stay in, but we have that on our bucket list of things to do. I know you really want to stay in a yurt. <laughs> if you do camp at Brighton, one of the things you should note is the camping is a pretty wide open grassy area and the sites are really small. And that means you are going to be packed in very close with your neighbors and you're going to have to be careful of all the little kids running around. So go super, super slow. I mean, you should do this in any state park, but especially we discovered at Brighton because of the configuration and the closest of everything, just just be extra mindful of all those little kids riding around on their bikes because they're probably not paying attention. Yeah, and because of the configuration of where everybody's rigs are at, you, you might have kids coming out on scooters or bikes kind of darting out from behind trailers and into the road, and you need to be ready for that. All in all, though, it made our list of favorites because it is a great park for families, and you should consider checking it out. We really hope you enjoyed our five favorites for families. They were in no particular order. We simply started with the Upper Peninsula and worked our way down. But we really did enjoy these parks, and we think that they are great for families of all ages. So consider checking some of these out. All of the 103 state parks offer something that you can enjoy if you really want to get out and check them out. But these are the ones that we picked out for families in Michigan. Get your family together. Get out camping. Keep on trekking. And we'll see you out there. We're going to start in... Oh, I thought I was starting, so I... I said I was going to start, and then you talk <laughs> oh, about it. That's not what I... Okay. Because <laughs> I, I just didn't open my mouth as right as you went to say that. Like a ventriloquist? <laughs> so. You open your mouth and I talk. Because I was like... <laughs> okay, I'm going to start. Okay. Okay.